What's up guys, Noah the Hot Rod Kid here. Welcome back to another episode of HRK Vlogs. In this episode, we are going to be going through and showing you what we did to get this vibro shear up and going again. So this is the equivalent to a Polmax machine, except it is a vibro shear. So really cool history on this one. Uh, it was built in 1962, and I hear that it came off of uh, some type of Navy ship. It was one of the machines that was on there. Um, so originally, for those of you who don't know, it was originally a machine that was built uh, to as a shear for shearing metal. So you'd have two pieces like this that would uh, reciprocate up and down to be able to uh, shear metal. Uh, metal shapers ended up finding out that they could insert different types of dies in here to make different types of uh, profiles for shaping metal. So you can see if I turn this on here, that comes on and it'll imprint this shape into whatever piece of metal you feed through it. So this week we went ahead and got this thing going. And then also we did some work to the Hudson project that you'll see as well. So stick around and see how we got it all done. So. I'm gonna put it on there, which is the part I need help with, mm -hmm. and then see what, uh, where the belts are at as far as. Alignment. Yeah. Maybe if you get it on yourself. What you need is uh, make yourself a mount on a plate mm -hmm. that is has the holes in the same place right here and here and slots and you just you build it yourself you don't use this this is a piece of crap this yeah. is the old mount from the original motor yep. you cut into pieces let's see if we can even get this thing to I mean they probably they, they had it worked before I mean so that was like right there and it's got to move that yeah. way of course so, but there's one belt right there, and then there's one belt right there. Yeah, because you can get to each of the heads from underneath with a wrench, a long wrench. Yeah, I don't even know. I don't think these things need to be, they need to be tighter than this, obviously. Oh, 100%. I don't think they need to be like, um, you know, serpentine belt tight. Right, no, they don't. We'll find out in short order if it's one you wire put power to it and it goes smoke or not. God, why did I I ripped it off there and like then put it in the hole and didn't keep track of And of course there's no wiring diagram. Tells you what's what. If there was, it's been painted over many years ago. This is such an old switch, but they still make them today. New versions of the same thing. I'm gonna find out as soon as you hit the switch. Huh? All right, so get down here and yeah, wire nut. All right, this is the moment of truth. Yeah. I'm a little nervous, to be honest. 
Yeah, exactly. I did my best guess for what I think it should be. God, I don't know why I did that. Be ready to okay. cut the power if things go wrong. is for a 1934 uh, sedan door. Um, so these are all machined out. These are the very first uh, profiles I've done on the Pullmax yet. The other ones were just some ones that came with it. Not really sure what they were for, but these actually have a dedicated purpose for a dedicated car. And that is the profile that we have right there. So let's go ahead and take this over to our door and see what this does for us. So this is just a little test piece just to kind of see how things are going. Um, so you can see this here. I have one door that's already chopped and you can see that there's this section missing here that we're going to need to create a filler piece for. And if we take this piece here, we can fit it up. Today we are back on the 1950 Hudson Commodore project. Um, this one took a little bit of a break for a while, but now we are going to get back on it. The body of this car is actually in really amazing shape. The floors need to be completely replaced, but other than that, everything else is in really good shape. Um, I'm just kind of starting at the front and I'm gonna kind of slowly work my way back. Uh, and on the front here, this little rib support piece kind of has some dents in it and some holes. And then this lower area here kind of also has some damage to it. So what I'm going to work on right now is I'm going to remove this rib piece in order to make the necessary repairs on it. Um, before I drill out any of the spot welds, I'm going to drill some eighth inch holes to place some plecos in. That way everything can go back together uh, where exactly where it was before. And then I'll work on drilling out all of the spot welds so I can remove this piece and get to work on it. Morning. Uh, Noah's got me over here today and yesterday putting this piece, this brace back on on the firewall. He took it off because there were several dents in it and it was misshapen and so he took it off, straightened it out and I'm uh, putting it back on, spot welding it back in and grinding him flat.
So we're pulling some of the panels for the Hudson out of storage so we can continue some of the metal work. Uh, so right now we're taking them into the shop so we can uh, begin all the last little minute details of uh, fixing the metal work. <laughs> 